on the Southern Pacific Railroad and asked him to look out for his friend Mosby. So when Mosby got off the steamboat in San Francisco, there was a kid, you know, Consul Mosby, Consul Mosby, so Mosby goes to see Cleveland Stanford, Stanford offers him a job. And while uh, Mosby was in San Francisco, Leland Stanford had a, a summer home or a second home in Pasadena, and he would go out and have these soirees or get-togethers with the neighbors. Um, and one of them, one, one of the neighbors was the Pat family from Virginia, and they introduced the old gorilla fighter to their son, George Jr. George Jr., George Patton. And they, because Mosby's reputation was so sterling, they allowed him to take their son out uh, and play gorilla fighter in the woods. He was little George. He was about ten years old, and it was it was not Mosby doing the training. It was it was a little patent kid who was asking all the questions, peppering the old man with questions. You know, how do you set up a, a, a surprise, and what do you do if you're out of ammunition? Blah 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 blah. And guess what happens when Georgie grows up to be a three-star general? <laughs> sure. Okay. So, and, and another thing I think is really cool. Why do you think Pat wore a pair of Colts on his hip? <laughs> huh? Where'd that come from? A pair of Colts on his hips. Okay. The question over here? Oh, I am. Um, about Pearl Henry Colts, yeah. that's right. How about Grant, the relationship with Grant? Yeah. Uh, they got together, he was a unionist, but. Yes. Grant, uh, there was a time when Grant and Mosby, it was about the relationship between Grant and Mosby. Yes. Uh, Grant, and Mosby would have killed each other had they had a chance during the war. But um, what, I, what I think really started it was in 1866, um, John Mosby had been arrested several times, three times, and um, uh, Pauline had had enough, his wife, John's wife, and she took their five-year-old son, Beverly, named after her father, uh, to Washington uh, to see President Johnson, and back in those days, you could just walk into the White House and say you want to see the president. That was, was okay. Um, now we don't. Now we. Now you can't do that. Um, and settle down. Settle down. It's a civil war stuff. We did other stuff. Um, uh, and it, it, there's anecdotal proof or anecdotal information that Andrew Johnson had been to their wedding. When they were married, they were married in Tennessee and, and by a Catholic priest at a uh, hotel in Nashville, Tennessee. And uh, Pauline's father, Beverly Clark, was a representative from Kentucky. So it would be protocol that if your daughter is being married in another person's state, another representative state, that you would invite that person to your daughter's wedding. Well, quite possibly, Andrew Johnson was at their wedding. So years later, after the war, she goes to see him and says, you know, uh, my husband has been arrested when this is for going to end. He says, well, it was up to me. Your husband would be stretching him. Get out of my office. So he, off she goes. And that night, uh, uh, Beverly is, she and Beverly in the hotel, and little Beverly's on his knees saying his prayers. And he looks up and he says, Mommy, would it be okay if I asked Jesus to send old Johnson to the devil? <laughs> and of course, she said, no, that's not what we pray for. Yes, boy. Uh, at any rate, uh, the next day, bent but not broken, she visits General of the Army, Ulysses Grant. And, it, and she is admitted into his office. He's like, Madam, please come in and sit down. Sonny, can we get you some water? Uh, tell me your story. And she says, you know, my, my husband's been arrested. He was the only Confederate officer not offered a parole. Uh, he's been harassed constantly. When is this war going to end? And it is Grant who opens his desk drawer pulls out a piece of paper and in his own hand writes Mosby's part. And it's Pauline, not John, but Pauline. If, any, if I was younger and had, a, had some time, I would want to write a, a story about Pauline Mosby. That one was one strong woman. Um, but nonetheless, it's Pauline who walks out with John's part that, that day. And I think that's the seed that's, that started this friendship between these two, two giants, visionaries. Grant's taken a lot of heat. I grew up hitting Ulysses Grant. I couldn't stand the side of it. I wouldn't, I, I, I couldn't stand the side of it. But, but through my research, I've come to respect this man as a visionary, especially during Reconstruction. Um, he, was, he was a very humane person. And um, he and Mosby became friends. Mosby became a Republican. Uh, in the name of my book, I'm 
and I'm working on the title as Hell is Being a Republican in Virginia. Uh, the post war search for peace and reconciliation between North and South and Grand Rose. Looks like we're done. <laughs> we're about to, you've got the bold team thing over here, don't you? There's a couple more questions. How many? A couple more. A couple more, okay. A couple more questions. Sir? Your knowledge of Mosley, don't you think that he instilled in his men and made them enjoy what they were doing? They got up every day just, just hoping for a fight. <laughs> and that's why they were successful. I, you know, I think it's, it was like most people said, it was an exciting an adventure, you know. Yeah, they were an adventure It was a time, you know, that, it was a time that things were happening and uh, they were part of history. And they were part of just an amazing, amazing piece of it. One more, sir. Do you have a recording of DVD or otherwise of all those things that you have such a vivid knowledge no. of? No. No. I, I do this, and I do it for free, uh, in gratitude to the people who came before me. Amen. Uh, I do this in gratitude to the men who, uh, 50, 60 years ago, that Virgin Carrington Jones and some of the, the great ones who preceded me, who did the yeoman's work. They, they tracked down these veterans, they went up on the porch and had the iced tea, and Mother brought out Grandpa's diary and his pistol and his sword and told stories. And these guys recorded the stories. And they recorded, they uh, not only recorded the stories, but they, they, they pieced all this stuff together. And I do this to honor them. And, and that's why I do this today. It's the best kind of history because it's the true history. Well, you know, I, I found that, you know, most people think history is pretty boring. But what, what I've found is that, is that what makes history alive is the stories. You know, we can all, all picture Stonewall Jackson sucking on 11 going in the back. We all can picture that, you know. And we can all picture a guy saying, I have but one, you know, I have no profanity except one. <laughs> you know, and uh, we've all, anybody who's been uh, through anything like that can, can certainly identify with it. Thank you all. You've been a wonderful group. I'll stand back for you. Thank you again for coming, and uh, as I stated earlier, if you have, uh, if you're a male and you have interest in the Sons Confederate Veteran, please step up here after uh, uh, we dismiss, and uh, we hope to see you again in a future Sons Confederate Veteran function. Thank you.